On today's episode of Watch Chair Go, I got a smart car and we're just gonna take it right out and see if it's possibly the best off-road, I, I don't even know what you call it, rig of all time. What is going on guys? I am Watch Chair Go and today I am here with my new, to me, 2009 Smart 42 Passion. As you can see, it's fully um, built on passion. Anyway, the smart car is a pretty hilarious car, if you guys know anything about it. And it was designed by Swatch, yes, the watch company, and Mercedes, and then it was considered art, so it's the uh, smart is Swatch Mercedes art. And that is how the name smart came to be. And of course, it was supposed to be this super tiny car, like a, an ultra compact car you could park anywhere, and it got incredible gas mileage and it's just a very efficient car because it's so small and it only weighs about 1700 pounds so incredibly light about half the weight of most of the cars on the road very safe it's a kind of a, a monocoque there's uh, all kinds of steel it all runs through here and down there it's this like integrated chassis and you've seen the testing i'm sure back in the day they showed these things bouncing off uh, road barriers and semis and stuff like that well it's pretty safe because of that. It's pretty slow. It makes 70 horsepower and 68 foot-pounds of torque out of its three-cylinder engine. It's a Mitsubishi engine that's hiding out in the back, so I'll show you guys that in just a moment. But for now, let's take a look at this thing. This one has been driven through a chain link fence. You can always tell when they're like chain link fence damage or uh, barbed wire. I see a lot of that. So it's just crazy scratches. It looks like lions ripped up the side of the car, motorcycle, whatever it is. And it just, it's all over the place. So it's in the cowl, it's in the A pillar. Uh, the glass itself is ripped up, which is pretty wild. You can see the damage on the glass there. So that needs to be replaced. It even got in here where the radio antenna is. I mean, this fence ripped up everything and that caused them to salvage title the car. They totaled it because of that, which is pretty funny. But either way, it runs great. It drives pretty much right. I will say the front suspension is shot. Uh, there are no shocks left, basically. So it's a strut assembly. The shocks need replaced. So it's got big and littles on it. This one's obviously a race car. You can see we've got these cute little 155 60 15s on the front. And in the back, we have like a massive tire, 185 65 15. It's uh, nearly twice the sidewall there. And when you're in it, it actually feels like you're kind of looking down at the road. So it's a, a reverse squat. Or the reverse squatted truck is a raked smart car, I guess. So the opposite, that's how much I hate squatted trucks, I guess. I bought this. All of the body panels on this, even if you have collision damage, are just replaceable. You can open up uh the doors and stuff like this and these skins you can see everything's plastic i think you pull a few bolts off i don't know quite where but you do pull some bolts off and all of the panels come off um everything like the door panel this uh this front fender it's just a couple 10 millimeter bolts you can drop all the body panels off with this if you need to work on it say you need to refill the washer fluid or something like that you can hit these hidden latches here in the grill. The front end lifts up. That's all it takes to replace the front end too, which is pretty funny. And you can see some of the fasteners for the fenders right there. Just a little Torx head. Uh, the coolant reservoir is up here because the radiator's in the front, even though the engine's in the rear. Washer fluid, brake fluid, all that stuff is right up front. I mean, look at that. There's like no damage on this, even if it was like hit, kind of a collision. All the tabs are there, nothing's broken, so. We'll just put that right back. Also, I don't know how this headlight's been replaced and this headlight hasn't, even though it was the damaged one. So not too bad. Obviously it is a smart car. It's incredibly low value. And if I like punch the headlight, insurance would probably total this car. So let's close up our front hood there. We'll continue walking around the smart car. There's not too much to note here. Just uh, it's got big power windows. Then it has a second glass section on the door. There we go. You can see some glass right there that opens with the door. Huge doors that open up super wide. This one has aftermarket speakers. It has an entire system, which is pretty funny. Uh, power windows that work great. They're huge power windows. A very, very simple dash. It's kind of an interior exterior tour 
all at once because this car is so simple. This is the whole interior, basically. You've got some uh, plastic wrapped in some cloth, a glove box. This one has a DVD player shoved in it, which is cool. It does have heated seats, so that's nice. The seats are like a vinyl, and there's not much else to talk about in the interior. That engine, going back to that, and this thing's super lightweight, 70 horsepower and 68 foot-pounds of torque, that's mated to a single clutch, which is really cool, like it's an Aventador, basically, or an old uh, you know, V10 M5, M6. It has a single clutch, the computer controls the clutch, and it's a five speed. The first generation smarts were six speeds, and then they went back to a five speed, or went to a five speed. It seems like a bad decision to me, but I guess they didn't want the computer to have to shift so much. So the computer is handling all of the clutch duties. It's not an automatic in any way. This is a, a manual transmission like the Aventador. It's a, it's a single clutch, you know? You can't run the clutch. The computer takes care of all of that, but it has paddle shifters so you can pick the gears. And it's, it's probably the worst single clutch you'll ever drive in your life. In all the supercars, it's fun. Single clutches are the best transmission you'll ever drive. It's like you think you're Michael Schumacher. It makes you feel like that. Uh, this is not that at all. This is a horrific driving experience. Eventually the car shifts and it only does it when it wants to and it does not go fast. Zero to 60 in this thing is 10.7 seconds. One of the slowest cars you'll ever be in in your life. And just like that, we've covered most of the exterior. Let's see if we can... Oh, you can hear those front shocks. Let's see if I can get some air. Not enough. I don't have enough power to lift half of the 1,700 pounds. But anyway, that was like the interior, the exterior, half the quirks all at once. All the controls are right here in the center. We'll hop in here in a second and give you a little walkthrough. But first, let's go around back and show you the hatchback on this thing. So, there should be a little switch right here. Pops open the electric lock on the hatch. It does have a rear wiper. This one, of course, has the aero package. You can see I've got the uh, wind vortex generators, the air vortex generators there uh, to kind of change the drag coefficient of the roof basically a mitsubishi evo mr once you put the vortex generators up there and we've got the high downforce package of course with the micro spoiler this rear wiper uh because so much downforce is generated it pulls the rain down we got to wipe it off i assume <laughs> uh, that's how the rear hatch opens crazy that the struts actually work on it and there's two little switches right here to open the tailgate and that's how you open the tailgate this has a 10 inch subwoofer in the back which takes up most of the cargo area there's also an alpine amp in here it has a complete system jvc speakers in the front power acoustic tweeters orion sub and an alpine amp and a pioneer head unit somebody literally said can i get every audio brand that there is and they shoved it all in here so that's pretty hilarious you hop in the back and you think that this right here is gonna open the tailgate. Like this looks like what you would use to open it. But no, this is actually more storage. And this appears to be the cargo net. I don't know what it is for sure. It's the cargo net. So let's throw our cargo net back in here. Close our tailgate. Lots of storage in here for what this car is, honestly. There you go. That was a full walk around of the exterior. Every one of these panels pops off and uh, if I decided to keep it, I'd probably just pull them all off and go have them wrapped so we could do some kind of crazy color. Now this has some aftermarket hubcaps on it. Uh, going with the micro spoiler, we also have light up valve stems that they light up when you're driving. I'm sure you might've had those on your bicycle or something. They are on this car as well and they do change colors and that's pretty funny. Brand new tires, we got waterfalls. <laughs> Uh, waterfall tires. I gotta. I'm I'm done with tire brands at this point. One cool thing about the Smart is it has this gigantic polycarbonate roof. I think they were glass in the first gens, but just like the Corvette, now it is polycarbonate, and it has a little shade. Covers all that up. If you need a break from the sun or the heat, you can just pull the shade right over there. Uh, the bad part about the polycarbonate is, of course, it cracks out like it's a headlight lens, and it just starts to look really bad. Also, I'm sure in a hailstorm. That's probably pretty scary. So we have some uh, plastic formed visors up here with a mirror for the passenger, little dome light, nothing up here in the center. This is a pretty basic model rear view mirror. Here are all the climate controls in between the vents. Pretty cool. This little slider changes the fan speed over here. The vent position right there, AC, rear defrost, and recirc. Recirc's actually pretty cool. We got a little smart car logo. That's interesting and then of course the temperature 
And that's basically it. We've got some gauges right here. It's really just a speedometer. I don't think there's even a tack. Let's start it up, see if there's a tack. No tack. There's no information. You don't get coolant temp, you don't get a tack, you have a fuel gauge and a speedometer, because that's what you need in your smart car. Uh, here are paddles to shift it. Horn, cute little sound. And it does have wipers and cruise control and auto headlights. All right, I'll give you that. That's pretty impressive, auto headlights. Uh, this cute little engine sounds like this when you bounce it off the limiter. When it's not in gear, you can only rev to probably 3000 RPM. I have no idea, there's no tack. It's all you get, maybe 3000. And if you do it right, you can almost make it sound cool. Uh, for the most part though, it's a smart car. It doesn't sound cool. Ignition, it's in the center. The key is a cool little kind of smart car logo in and of itself. You can see the smart logo on the back. The key is kind of shaped like that as well. Buttons are worn out on this one. Here's your shifter. If it's on, that's how you shift. And you can put it in manual mode over there. Has a change holder, two cup holders. The seats are fully manual and an e-brake. And that's, that's basically this entire car. We basically went over all of it in a handful of minutes. Are they auto? No auto windows. This is no luxury car. You don't even get auto down. And this is a 2009. So here in the back, we pop out this cover. It's so hot. We drove this thing around for a little bit. Oh, the cover is on fuego. Woo! There you go. That is our cute little three cylinder. I don't want to work on that. I'll tell you that much. But here's the air filter over here. It runs to that cute little electric throttle body right in there, a tiny little alternator. I mean, this thing is like 900 cc's. It is a baby. How's that oil look? Wow, how deep is this? Is there even oil in this? It looks like the oil might be pretty recent. I'll give them that. And then it does say Smart Approves a Mobile One, which is pretty funny. What do you think this is, some kind of supercar? After this thing breaks down, Smart was nice enough to put in the old, what you would call a tailgate seat in the marketing material what you call the waiting on the tow truck seat everywhere else. Now that we've gone on a complete tour of my Smart 4.2, let's take it off-road because that's what everyone does with these. Everybody lifts them and then goes off-road and just see how capable it is in stock form. Uh, maybe you don't need to lift them or do anything crazy to have a pretty capable off-roader. Or maybe you do. Or maybe it's just not that great off-road. Let's find out. Hey, we're doing some science here. I know everyone converts these into off-road vehicles, so I just want to see how good it is at being an off-road vehicle. Oh, it stalled. <laughs> but it was doing it. All right, we're gonna try again. Neutral, restart. She's happy. Don't worry, it's got a Mercedes heart. Oh, it's actually pretty good at off-roading. That's like a three foot climb. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a hole there. I don't know if it can get out of holes. There's no four wheel drive. Oh, look at that angle! <laughs> Our smart car is truly the best budget off road vehicle today we find out. Going back up the hill just to see if we've got, got power. No, stop dying on me. We're going back down a small hill. I don't want to try going down the big hill yet. The front suspension's so jacked up. It needs the lift kit. It needs it. And the coolest thing about this car is the high maneuverability you have once you're out of the off-road park or whatever you can really just kind of make it go wherever you want. Like, you don't need any room. It'll fit. Man, the smart car is so much better than I ever thought. I've only ever driven one on the highway. I've never used it for all of this off-roading. All right, here we go again. We're going back up. Look at that, that Jeep right there. He looked over because he knows his Jeep isn't as capable as a smart car.
We have all of our safety gear in place, and by safety gear, I would assume you really just need like a bicycle helmet if you're driving this car. But we're gonna launch it. This is a complete launch. I'll even, I don't know if I can sidestep the brake because it's a single clutch, but here we go. 10, 20, 30, 40. Almost made it to the speed limit. Well, it takes quite a while, but it will do the speed limit. And it does have a spoiler, so we had lots of downforce while we were making that pass there. It's actually a pretty good setup if you are into race cars or, or slow cars, that's uh, slow cars. Why does it seem fast? Well, there you go. The Smart did pretty well, honestly, pretty well. It went up some crazy grades, stuff that's like almost straight up. I don't know how. I think the reason it's so good is because the approach angle is basically nothing. Like it can push the bumper back just a little bit and the tires are in the approach right where they need to be. And it really doesn't even high center on some pretty aggressive climbs. And there's no tires in the front. The tires in the front are junk. It is rear wheel drive, of course. It's rear engine, rear wheel drive. And those tires are excellent, which is probably why we made it up those uh, climbs. I think the rear engine and having some traction in the back because all the weights on it are the reason that it actually kind of works. Now you're probably wondering what I paid for it. And I traded my first, my high school Camaro for this because I had fully given up on the high school Camaro. I decided I wasn't going to do any more work on it. We did so much work and it just needed so much more and I didn't want to spend like $50,000 doing the restoration that I wanted because I needed to buy a new ZL1 basically to put in it. So I traded this straight across. I was asking 4,000 for the Camaro and this is worth about 4,000. So I think it was a good trade and I'm gonna have some fun with this thing. So that is it for today guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shop, watchchairgo.com for cool shirts just like this. And please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you want to do. And I will talk to you next time. We talked a lot about this car, but I'd say the craziest thing is it's eight foot long, which is nuts, right? That's so small. If you park smarts in parking spots, you can take two of them and put them in a normal parking spot sideways because they fit between the lines in your typical parking spot. And that's easily evidenced by the fact that we lined up the front of the smart with the front of the 65 F100. And if you come back here, it doesn't even go past the cab. So you can literally take two of these park sideways in a parking spot. It's like having a motorcycle. And it's honestly, it's kind of fun. Like, it's not fast. The transmission's kind of horrific in this thing, but it's kind of fun. And I guess it's cute. Everyone gives it the, the cute factor.